Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. Pastor Jeremy is teaching on the imminent return of Jesus. Such a powerful message preparing people for the return of Jesus in today's time. We believe that you will be strengthened, encouraged, maybe even challenged by today's message. Let's open our Bibles together and head into the sanctuary with Pastor Jeremy right now. See, you always have to be careful about taking the way men look at things. In particular, in our day, one of the biggest demons we're up against in the sin time hour is fueled by humanism. So in other words, they approach it from man's point of view. What does man think about this? Well, I'm in the wrong business here as a, if you don't want to talk just the business side of church, uh, you know, building a church on the truth. It's, it's kind of like, this is out of fashion right now. Because men and women in America don't really want to hear the, the message of righteousness. You got to live right. You got to turn from your sin and repent and follow. That's not a popular message. You may not know that, but I'm telling you, it's not a popular message. Well, just look around and you'll figure it out. It's not a popular message. But you're obeying something. I mean, think about it. Well, I'm too busy to come to church. I'll stay home. That's a commandment of a man. You know, everybody understands that. Everybody cut you slack for that one. I got to mow the grass. We're getting this rain. Of course, you're not going to mow in that rain. So a lot of people are like, well, it's wet. I'm going to stay home. God brought the rain, not for you to stay home. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just trying to point something out here. If you're not careful, you're going to elevate the commandments of men and the way man approaches it and the way man's good with this and that and not good with this and that and start living according to that way of living. And you got to be careful for that. Verse eight, there's the real important key to catch. Mark seven, verse eight, for laying aside the commandment of God, you lay hold the tradition of men. Notice that. You lay aside what? The word of God. So you're not living according to the basis of the word. It's the tradition of men. And the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. Wow, Jesus is about to rebuke them. Hang on. He said, all too well, you reject the commandment of God. So notice, here's the thing that he's just hitting over and over. And we've read these before. We've looked at these before. But you reject the commandment of God. You lay aside God's word. You just do your own thing. Folks, that just described not just our American culture, but a lot of the church culture in America. Where people just do it however, life, however they want. People have said, well, I can... Uh, you know, just shack up with whoever, just test it out before we get married. According to what scripture? On the basis of what word? See, well, that's just what people do. It's common law. What is that? You've elevated something man says and you've rejected what God says. See, God calls that fornication. God calls that adultery. People, well, here we go, talking about this thing. People have told me this, you're a clothesline preacher. Well, you can call it what you want. Just hang your clothes up there and let them dry. <laughs> Praise God, and you'll be all right if you follow the word. You have to live a lifestyle where you receive the commandments of God and you're excited. I'm thinking of what John said. This is the love of God that we take his commandments, we do them, and... He says, keep them actually. And they're not burdensome or grievous. They don't, it doesn't grieve you to obey the word. You're like, thank God, this is my life. For those that find the word, they find life. They find health to their flesh and their joints and their marrow. There's healing in the word, praise God. If you need healing in your body because the sickness is being stubborn, you better start feeding on healing scriptures. I literally get to a point where it's 24-7 if need be. Other than when you come to church, you're like, I'm on this, I'm feeding on this word, and there's healing in that word. I can't tell you how many times, as soon as a, a sniffle will start, or a, a cough, or a little tickle in my throat, I, a lot of times I'll go down, and I don't go get on the couch because Aaron kicked me on the couch. I never do that, praise God. It's my bed, my house. I don't move to the couch for that kind of stupid reason. I move down there because I want to play the word. 
Because I start listening to that word on healing and she needs her sleep. I sure don't want to wake the baby up and anyone else. So I'm going to go down there and I'm going to hear the word. I can't tell you how many times it's fed my spirit. And I'll tell you right now, those symptoms leave because I'm pressing into the word of God. And I'm saying, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Healing's in the word. But if you reject the commandment of God, there's no healing coming. You know what the enemy wants to do? He wants you to have a picture in your mind that doesn't line up with the word of God. That's rejecting the word of God. If you take that thought and you keep on taking that thought and keep on taking that thought and keep on talking about that thought. This is why you got to stop talking about some things in your life or else you're always going to go around the same mountain over and over like the children of Israel in the old Testament. I got to keep going here. All too well, Jesus said, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. See, this is how people live. Well, you know, Sunday's my only day off and I got to have family day and I bought a boat. We got to go to the lake. Well, that's exactly, this scripture is exactly for you. Because see, well, I got to keep that. This is family time after all. God wouldn't require me to put my family on the altar. Well, anything that's ahead of God is wrong. It's called idolatry. You see, let me just tell you something, men and women. You cannot operate a family unit the right way without God being in first place. You can't love anybody like you're supposed to without God being in first place. What does that mean? His word is in first place. Everybody say first place. place. See, you got to have a basis for what you're doing. It's for sure you don't want to reject the commandment of God to keep your tradition. He says in verse 10, Mark 7, Jesus speaking, For Moses said, honor your father and mother. He who curses father and mother, let him be put to death. Whoa. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you may have received from me is Corbin, that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother. Now look what he says. I really want to zone in on verse 13. This is why we went to Mark 7, starting out the gate tonight. Jesus said this. This is a very interesting statement. You've made or making the word of God of no effect. Now you've got to wrap your mind around this. And if you've come here, I've talked about this before, but I don't always talk about it with the verse right there within your eyesight. If you make the word of God of no effect, you've taken the parent force of the universe that created this whole planet and everything else. And you're making it of no effect in your life. Accelerate Church has opened its doors to a second location located at 1300 East Central Avenue in Amarillo. The Word of God is thundering forth every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. from seasoned ministers here at Accelerate. If you live in the area, we invite you to join us for power-packed services each week and bring the entire family. We have something for the little ones too. God is building strong families, and we would love for your family to join us. So many people don't get God results. Why? They'd rather hold the tradition of man. They'd rather do something that's just a tradition that they do. Now, there's good traditions if they're on the basis of the word. You, those should be handed down. And I thank God I can't help this. I was the kid in my parents' home and they handed down to me the word of God. The stories they told me were not about Jason going to hell. They weren't about Freddy Krueger. They weren't telling me about the boogeyman. You know what they were telling me? About Rhoda going to the door, not letting Peter in when they've been praying for him about an angel delivering him, about Paul and Silas praising God, about Publius on an island. I always laughed at that name, thought it was hilarious. <laughs> These are the stories I grew up with, David and Goliath. Samuel hearing what he thought was Eli, running in there saying, yes, you called me. He said, no, I didn't call you, running back again. I loved hearing all these stories. This is what I heard over and over growing up and many, many others, you know, the three Hebrew boys thrown in the fiery furnace, Daniel thrown into a lion's den, God delivering all these people. All these stories I've heard since I was little and that's what was handed down to me. I can't help that. Those are the kind of traditions that are good. Why? It's on the basis of the word. But just because 
your parents raised you to watch scary movies doesn't mean you need to hand that down to the next generation. And you say, well, it didn't hurt me none. It was just all fun and make-believe, but you don't know. Say, I have no idea, though my parents handed me that. I dealt with fear a lot. And I'm talking absurd fear. Seriously. I literally, if, if mom or dad came in to pray for me, especially dad, he'd always remember to say this. Now I always be like, Ugh. He would say, now you stay in your bed. Why? A thunderstorm comes through. One crack of thunder, man, I'm bolting. <laughs> the other night I went, we went for a walk, Aaron and I, we went over to Garrett and Farrell's and we walked in their neighborhood and we were walking by this park and they said, look over there. And they, these jokers had a Wolverine on their front of their house there. I mean, I'm talking, it, it stood up. It looked like it's about 10 to 12 foot tall. I'm not exaggerating. It's huge. I said, that's crazy. Cause I looked at this and mom remembers the story and you may have heard me say this before, but one night for whatever reason, and now I know it was the enemy giving me these thoughts, look out that window. I looked out that window, looked down the street and I thought I saw that exact image I saw walking in the park the other night, a big old wolf. I screamed. My mom came running in there. What is it? I said, there's a wolf outside. Giant. She said, there's no wolf outside. I'm, I mean, I was terrified. I don't know if mom remembers that or not. But you know, as a kid, I tell these stories sometimes and I'm learning now as a dad, my perspective as a dad, a lot of things are just kind of low key, no big deal. But as a kid, sometimes these things are humongous deals, right? So I'll tell these stories to my parents. Sometimes they're like, huh, I remember that, but I just didn't remember it being that big a deal. And I'm starting to relate to the parent side of that sometimes. But I'm talking about when I was a kid right now, because I literally, I was freaked out. I, I thought I saw, I don't know why I looked down that street. Mom grabs me by the hand. She said, come here. We walked outside. She said, I want you to look and tell me where it was. I said, it was down there. And it was a, mom said, look, it's a tree. And you know what mom reminded me what she handed down? God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Now see, with, I was, with me already turned that way, if my parents had been the type of parents that said, you know what, we're going to hand down scary movies. You know what? That would have been a stronghold to this day in my life, fear. Would have been a stronghold to this day. Because that's what people end up dealing with. And you know what? You can't help what your parents did, and you shouldn't be mad at them. That's not the point of me bringing this up. I can't help what my parents handed down to me. But one thing I know is this. In life, you're going to have to sift through this and realize, is it on the basis of the word or is it just a tradition handed down? Because if it's just a tradition, you can make the word of God a no effect. Isn't that something? Wow. If you study history, you'll find out that when people make the word of God of no effect, they always do this. They run to try to seem like they're very intellectual and smart now. I've watched, I mean, the stories in the Bible, I referred to a bunch of stories. There's a lot of stories in the Bible where this has happened. Israel's a prime example because what would happen, and this happened over and over. All you have to do is read through there. You, if you read, you know, in, in Samuel, first saying Samuel, first saying Kings, first saying Chronicles, you read back in Deuteronomy, in Exodus, you read some of these places. Here's basically, let me just sum it up. They would serve God. God would bless them. They would be so blessed. No enemy could come against them. They would increase. They would prosper on the left hand and the right. Many times they would get in paneled houses, plural. They'd have houses to choose from because God's blessing them. But then they would forget God. They would disregard what got them there following God. And then here comes disaster. Just study history. You'll see what I'm telling you is true. So then they finally find repentance. And once they would repent, God starts to turn the thing around. They start walking in the blessing again. Glory to God. Things start going well. Then once again, they're prospering on the left hand and the right. And then they forgot God. And if you study, it was happening every 150, 250, 300 years. This is what was happening. And it was hard for it to be, go from generation to generation to generation. Well, look at Christianity now. I've been asked to write a foreword in a book about the sin of Eli from Pastor Kenny Gatlin. I'm excited about that. And he said, the reason I've chosen you is because you're one of the few men of God that I've met whose dad was a man of God and handed the work to you. And you've continued in that and you haven't compromised. I said, praise God. You just blessed me by saying, he said, well, I'm serious. He said, as I travel around, that is not common. Well, I'm just letting you know it's because 
uh, the things handed down, many times the sons, they want to go out here and leave the, where the fathers, the path the fathers have charted out and forget those landmarks and blow right past them. Say, forget that. I'm going to make new ones. Yeah. Well, not here. My, <laughs> my dad charted out a path and praise God for it. I'm standing on his shoulders and we're going further than we could before. And when the time comes, if Jesus tarries is coming, which I don't believe is going to happen, but if he does, the plan is someone's going to stand on my shoulders and they're going to take it further than I've taken. That's why we're raising up warriors and leaders and sending out hope right here. Why? Because these guys right here at Accelerate, some of them graduating this year, man, I'm so proud of them and some of the younger ones even, the way they've been preaching, the way they've been pressing into God, the way they've been filling their minds with the word of God. I'm telling you, they're set up to be world changers. They're going to take it further. I mean, I, you know, we got to have a ministry that's from generation to generation. We serve the king of all generations. Praise God. And what are we handing down? The truth. The word. If it's not on the basis of the word, then what are you handing down? Stuff that makes the word of no effect. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. Um, and I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what, I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so me and the kids continued to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was the single mom because my husband wasn't there, but I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point, our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'll say, hey, we're going to church, see you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him and it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's gonna fill this seat. <laughs> uh. So that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. Um, I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep and he was up putting on a button up shirt and I remember him just, oh, sorry. <laughs> I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> you know, after my husband came to church with me, um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church, and I said, well, what caused you to come like with us to church? And he said, honestly, I've seen a change in you, and I wanted what you have. I would say right around that time, um, I thought my marriage was over. And that statement alone was confirmation that it's not. And for him to see that change in me because I kept showing up, now he keeps showing up and my kids keep showing up. And now we have his little brother. I would say like my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up. And I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home, but one thing I would not do, hold on. Um, don't nag them, just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you. Because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now. So now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent is gonna affect more than just you. We're living in the last days 
And it says in 2 Timothy 3, these days will be perilous days. And I was reading that and I preached a series on that perilous days not long ago. But I want you to look at this verse in 2 Timothy 3, 7. Say it one more time. Thank God for the word. Because during perilous times, here's what people are going to be doing. They're going to always be learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's exactly what's happening in our day. Learning, 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 learning. Oh, information. Got it everywhere. But if what you're learning isn't based on the word of God, then you're attaining knowledge, okay? But that doesn't necessarily equate to truth. So what does that produce? Well, uh, a generation just like we find ourselves in the midst of right here with a bunch of fatheads. People with a lot of uh, sense knowledge and their brains, you know, it's like we got all kinds of sense knowledge. They're claiming to be wise, but God's word is missing. As I was meditating on that, it made me think of Jeremiah. And I got to show you this. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8. How can you say we're wise and the Lord, the law of the Lord is with us? Look, the false pen of the scribe certainly works falsehood. Isn't that something? It's happening in our day. There are people writing prophecies. They never come to pass. No one says anything. Yeah, well, they said, thus says the Lord, but it didn't happen. That's the false pen of the scribe working falsehood. Verse nine, the wise men are ashamed. They're dismayed and taken. Behold, here's why they have rejected the word of the Lord. So what wisdom do they have? Well, I like that. That's just so right in our face. When you reject the word of the Lord, you don't have any wisdom about you. I don't care how smart you sound. I don't care how witty you come across online, what kind of influencer you are online. Doesn't even matter when you reject the word of God. Here the word says what the word says, and God gives you influence to push the word. But you'd rather push yourself. This is the generation we live in. And if I'm not talking to you, it doesn't apply to you. You should just scream amen anyway. <laughs> Without a basis on the word of God, you're then left to operate with wisdom that does not come from above, but wisdom that comes from beneath and is sensual and actually evil, according to James, the first pastor. But I wanted to point this out before I move across from Jeremiah too quick. Isn't this interesting that Jeremiah saw this years and years ago, and yet we find ourselves alive in 2023, and here it's very much the same in our day. Where people, they reject the word. Oh yeah, I done heard the word. Well, what wisdom do you have apart from that, may I ask? Well, I've got a lot. No, you don't. Well, I've got, <laughs> the guy tell me this recently. I've got my master's degree. <laughs> I, a job well done. I mean, that takes a lot of effort, a lot of discipline to get that done. Yeah. But if that master's degree disregards the word and rejects the word, then what are you left with? And this is what we have to confront ourselves with in this day because we live in the information age deluxe. You kidding me? You just open one app, Google. You might want to type your own thing to look up and they'll have all kinds of news things. If you're not careful, you get caught scrolling and reading all that. Much less if you get on social media, waste hours a day looking at Opinionville and it don't even really matter what people say if it's not on the basis of the word. And yet people spend so much time worried. Did you see what they said? No, and I don't want to. Save yourself the trouble. Don't even text me. No, I don't want to hear it. I'd rather focus on the Word of God. There's, there's too many souls on the line. There's too many disciples to be made. Yeah. And when the Lord, He confirms His Word, and what happens? Increases your influence, which happens when you follow Him with all your heart. The anointing increases. He enlarges our ministries. Praise God. I'm preaching the partnership class and the Word I got, if you didn't notice that. What happens? 
He moves and does exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. We just sit around and say, look what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord forever. Well, we just got to stay on that path. And I'm just telling you right here, well, we're a prosperous church. We're a blessed church. And the only way we're going to stay that way is to keep doing what got us here. Sticking with the word, staying faithful, staying planted. I was teaching chapel last week and I just feel prompted to tell you this. If you plant an apple tree, I started researching this. I said, how quick, if I was to plant me an apple tree, because they don't give those away anymore. Pears, we go through so many pears, you wouldn't believe it. I, Aaron told me one of my favorite things the other day, go pick a pear over there. I love that. It's time to pick a pear. I judge those pears. Look at that fruit. Ah, that one's all mushy. I don't want that one. This one, I like this one right here. Don't have all those brown spots on it, right? I was judging that thing. Do you judge fruit? When you go to the grocery store? Do you judge fruit of your own life? If you're going to judge when you're picking a pear, you better judge the rest of everything you're picking in life, right? Well, you go to the grocery store, get to get some fruit. Praise the Lord. I better stop. I'm going to dismiss and go to the store right now. But I wanted to plant an apple tree. I was looking at this, maybe a pear tree, because I'm tired of spending all that money on that, right? <laughs> I'm really not, but God provides. I'm just saying, we spend a lot of money on this. So what if you plant a pear tree? What if you plant a pear tree, uh, an apple tree or a cherry tree, something like that? Did you know the average is four to seven years before they produce fruit that you can eat? They got to be planted and just stay there. You just stay there. Now, why, what does that speak to you? You're going to have to get planted and just stay where God put you and stop getting so antsy. Well, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? When's it? Just wait. It's growing. The roots are getting attached to all the nutrients down in the soil. And you just got to give it time. Praise God. And bloop, there comes some fruit. Praise our Lord. <laughs> hey, the word's not hard to understand. The deal is, it takes obeying it to stay free of deception. Well, thanks again so much for tuning in with us to today's broadcast on the imminent return of Jesus. While that does conclude today's message, that does not conclude this message in its entirety. And if you would like to hear more, head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find the rest of this series as well as other series preached by Pastor Jeremy. Or if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If you're not in the area, we would still love to hear from you. You can write us at info at accelerate.church.cc. We would love to hear from you, pray with you, encourage you. You can even give us a call right here at 806 418-8913. We can't wait to hear from you and see you on the next television broadcast.